It's a totally different market every single year. Find the optimism and opportunities within the changes and go continue to crush it. If you're not learning new things, you ain't got no new content. There's so much business just in this room. If it takes out the entire population of agents, all the way down to two agents, I'm gonna be one of them two agents and I'm gonna outsell the other one. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Ricky Carew! Ricky Carew from Gulf Shores, Alabama. I introduce you, he's number one, not top four. He's the man of the real estate industry. <laughs> Stand up, goodness gracious. You guys had to sit on the front row. This one's not working good? That's for the video. Ah, here we go. All right, hey, if you're ready to learn how to magically create deals out of thin air and change your life forever, say, I am. Congratulations, give yourself a hand for being here. The, uh, give it up for the panel. Like, I hope you guys were taking a bunch of notes. They were hitting every single thing, er everything that I do on social media, they said exactly what I do. If you wanna know how to create social media, go back and watch the replay of this. Matter of fact, they kind of inspired me for a second. Would you guys be all right if we made a piece of content right now together? Yeah. Okay, so you gotta be quiet, and then when I say psych, you guys are gonna go crazy. Can we do it? Yeah. Okay. Okay guys, here I am, South Florida once again, speaking at another event, and because the market is so bad down here, the agents just didn't show up. Psych! Oh my goodness. How's the market in South Florida, guys? Hey, the market is good and well alive in South Florida. Now let me get back to my speech. Hey. I didn't use the ooh. First off, I just want to say, okay, I've been in this industry a long time. We're gonna have fun today, I can already tell. Uh, I just wanted to say, before I kind of get into my thing here, that I, I just wanted to, to make it be known and say it out loud, that real estate agents are the most resilient people on the planet. We've been through everything, everything. 2008, you can go back farther than that. 2008, okay, pandemic, higher interest rates. Do you know transactions right now are as low or lower than 2008 levels right now? We still here, we still standing strong, right? We, we, we may even be better than we've ever been as an industry. And y'all gonna let a, little, a few little rule changes and commissions ruin your day? We've been through way worse stuff than them changing a little bit of rules on how we uh, get paid, do our commissions. This is nothing. You guys realize this? It's absolute, I want you to realize this before I get into my thing, before I, I wanna set, set the pace of this, that the changes that are happening, if you, got, if you have to take listing side and not even, if they tell you you can't offer even a seller concession, if they say that, you should say, okay, what's the new rules? What's the new rules? Give me the new rules and watch me, what? Crush it. Out of the water. You know where it comes from? It comes from self-development. See. People that are worried about this, and it's not your fault, but I wanna tell you why you're worried about it if you are worried about it. It doesn't matter what happens in the market. You know the market changes every year. It's a totally different market every single year. Completely different. That didn't stop us before. Next year's gonna to be totally different, right? And now we've got the election. There's a lot of uncertainties, but I tell you something that's certain, you are going to crush it, right? Make some noise if you know what I'm talking about. 
Are you looking to set and close more listing appointments? That's exactly why I created the Set More Listing Appointments Challenge. It's a four day challenge and I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about setting more listing appointments and closing more listing appointments. If you wanna become a listing machine, then you need to take the next challenge. You can go to setmorelistingappointments.com or just click the link in the description. I'll see you on the next challenge. Okay, round three. Here we go. Now, Jim Rohn, he said it best. He said, don't wish it were different. Wish you were better. Wish you were better. Now, what did he mean by that? How do you get better, right? Well, well number one, what he's saying is, is don't fret about changes that are inevitably gonna happen Take the changes, take advantage of the changes, find the optimism and opportunities within the changes and go continue to crush it, right? But how do you, how do you become better? How do you become a better person? The first thing you gotta do, learn new things. And the problem is, is that we learn just a little bit and then we think we know everything we need to know and we stop learning, we just execute on those things. And then when something happens, when a change occurs, oh, we're scared now, because we stopped learning new things so that we, be we could co become the person who's not worried about anything. So when you learn new things, then you do new things. Right, you can't just learn them, you have to go do them. That's the next step in becoming the person right, that doesn't worry about the changes. I'm telling you guys this because, for a reason, right? Have you guys been watching me make live calls on YouTube? Where I literally create deals out of thin air. I don't sell anymore. I do this for you. I don't do it for my health. I don't make any money doing it. I do it for no other reason than to just show you how to do it. Because a lot of coaches will, they'll tell you how, but they don't show you how, okay? I tell you and I show you. And the reason that I do that, right, is so that hopefully you will learn something and then you will, what? Do something. do something, right? And you do something new, you learn something new so you can do something new so that you eventually master new things. See, this is, this is where you wanna be, right here. And you can't do this if you stop doing this. I'll talk more about how to learn new things in a minute when I get into content creation. But for now, I just want you to understand the framework. If you're not doing the things you need to do to get around top producing agents, learn what they learn, learn their beliefs, learn their methodologies. So you can let it rub off on you so that you can do new things, so you can master these things. Listen, before I started making live calls again four weeks ago, I haven't made a, live, I haven't made a call at all in well over a year, maybe even two years, right? You want to talk about rusty? I don't, I, don't, I don't sell real estate anymore. I get on the live calls, I don't have a script in front of me. I don't plan out who I'm gonna call. I'm not trying to research all the properties and figure out, no, I just go live, hit live, and start talking to people. And then what? It sounds natural, like I'm breathing air. Like I did, when you watch me do it, it's like, wow. He does that like, uh, like he's eating or driving or tying his shoes. It's just natural. Why? Because you've mastered these things. When you master the communication process and the entire listing process, from start to finish, you've been through it so many times because you learned how to do it, then you did it so many times to the point that you mastered it, it becomes so easy. But the problem is we get into this trap that we learn a little bit, we think we know what we need to do to master it, but we don't we have to continue here. All right, so there's gonna be a year in the near future where we hit seven million transactions as a country, okay? Seven million, say it, seven million. Seven million. We're gonna hit seven million transactions sometime in the near future. When's that gonna be? Don't know, okay? And it doesn't matter. We just know it's gonna happen. Now back in 2021, we had six million transactions, right? Remember that year? Crazy year. 
and everybody thinks that's the record. No, it's not. 2005, we had 7 million transactions. Did you know that? We had 7 million transactions as a country in 2005. Almost 10 years ago. So you're telling me in a country that has a higher population than we did back in 2005, we've got more pent-up demand than we've ever seen. Do you guys realize that, that how prime the market is right now? While everybody's saying, you, you need to be going all in. I'm talking all in, why? Because when we hit this year of 7 million transactions, you're going to wish to God that you went all in now to expand your influence, to stack your inventory, to build those relationships, to build your business as large as you can get it before this happens. Because if you do that, when this happens, your business, four, five, six, seven, eight X's that year, are you tracking? Right now is your moment and you don't even know it, right? How many of you like look at 2008 and you think, oh, I wish I, I, wish I would have been in business back then. Does anybody think that? Nobody, all right. We're at 2008 levels right now. The only difference is prices aren't down 50% like they were back then, okay? They weren't down 50%. They're not down 50% now like they were back then. That was the, how easy was it to sell real estate back then? Hey, it's the same house, it's 50% off. And the buyer's like, what? Give me two. Let me buy, let me buy one, get one free. <laughs> it's a BOGO deal, that's what it was. It was so easy. That is the situation that we are in right this second, ladies and gentlemen. And most agents are sitting around sleeping on this because they're worried about everything else, all the distractions going on. As we move closer and closer to the seven million transaction year, and you get to where you realize what I'm saying here, I, I'm just telling you, you're gonna look back and say, I wish I would have went all in. All right, now, how many of you guys, this is your first time seeing me in person? Okay. Nice to meet you guys. I'm Ricky Carruth, and I help real estate agents get and close more listings than any other coach on the planet, okay? And I do that because I teach them a little principle that I came up with called FE, okay? This is my core principle that, that branches into everything, everything, okay? So I started in real estate in 2002, okay? 2002. Right? I made a million dollars before I'm 23 years old. Okay? I lose it all in the crash. I come back in 2008. Okay? And by 2014, I'm landing over 100 listings a year as a single agent with one assistant. Okay? And then I do that all the way for eight years in a row, 2021, every single year, I'm knocking down 100 listings, I'm closing over 100 deals every year. Single agent, one assistant. Now I'm saying all that because I wanna, I wanna make a point is that I did all of that with zero social media. As, as I'm going through this, I'm so laser focused on this and making a million dollars a year, right? I completely had my blinders on. Once I got to the million dollars a year, I said, what's this social media thing? And today, I have used social media to 4X my income. So now I've built a business, a million dollar business without it. Now I've built a multi, multi million dollar business with it, okay? So we've kind of been there, done that from all, all different corners. Okay? So when you think about social media, because I, I didn't use social media, okay? but to build my real estate business, I did one of the leading factors of why I built such a large business was because I was great at content creation. And people get it confused. What is content? Well, I'll tell you what it's not. It's not social media. Social media is a place where you post content. But it's not the content. 
right? And through the content that I posted on social media, I built a brand. What is a brand? Brand is a story. So how many of you guys are already following me somewhere online? A brand. This is the best definition I've ever heard. My mentor told me this. He said a brand is a name that, that reminds you of a story that you want to be in. A brand is a name that reminds you of a story that you want to be in. So when you guys look at my social media, what's the story that my name reminds you of that you want to be in? I can tell you what it is. It's a story of perseverance, hard work, determination, never going to quit, hope, right? Unlimited business to the promised land, okay? How many of you, if you were able, right, if there was an opportunity for us to be in business together, right, and do maybe a real estate deal or something like that, how many of you guys would want to be in that deal with me? Why is that? Because my name reminds you of a story that you want to be in, right? And this is what you've got to get down right here is that you're telling a story. I love everything that the panel talked about with solving problems and telling a story and they don't care about 10 year treasuries. Man, everything they said was spot on. At the end of the day, from the, the story I want my name to remind you of from this day forward, when you see Ricky Carruth, I want you to think of the agent who went all in on their business now. And that year that we hit six and seven million transactions, their business exploded and did seven, eight figures. That's the story that I want my name to remind you of moving forward. And I want that to ring in your head every time you see my post. I want you to think, I gotta go all in. I gotta keep going all in. Because we know where the market's going. There's only one way for them, there's only one direction from the, of the market from here. So if that's you, if you're the agent that's going all in right now to build your business to the moon until we hit that seven million transaction, let me hear you. Nobody? I was like, where? I'm at the nature reserve here. It's like, I'm learning about trees. So, content. Okay, what is content? It's not social media. Okay, what is content? Content is, are the words that you think, speak, and write. So they talked about a lot of technical details, when to post, how much time to post, and they talked a lot of, they talked a lot of principles as well, but I wanna go a little bit deeper, okay? Content are the words that you think, speak, and write. And the, the one reason why people make content they think is great, but in reality it's not, is because you're saying stuff people already know and you heard it from somebody and it's very basic stuff and it has nothing to do, there's nothing earth shattering that you're saying. When you, when you make people stop, right? Because it's hook story offered. Hook grabs their attention. The story delivers the value. If you hook them, and you do deliver value, and it's something that they never heard before, now you're doing something. So how do you do that? It comes back to learning. See, if you're not learning new things, you ain't got no new content, okay? How do we learn new things? Right, be around top producers, number one. Number two, Client experiences, right? Experiences with your client. Like you, you learn something new, now you use that to apply to get new clients, now you immerse yourself with the new clients, and now you're doing the thing. And you're slowly learning how to communicate in the way that makes them feel comfortable with you so that you're the most likable agent out there. You, you guys talk to an agent, and you may think, we're friends, this is my client, but that's not what they're thinking. They're thinking, you're a nice person. I like you as a friend, but you're not the one out of, how many agents are in the area? Okay, you're not the one out of 60,000. You gotta be, you gotta be number one out of 60,000 to be the one, right? And so we have, we have a mirage where we feel like we are, we are number one because they were nice to us and they do like us, but we haven't solidified ourselves as a number one. The only way to learn how to become someone's number one out of 60,000 is what? Putting yourself in so many situations where you're in front of clients that you can't help but to get better. You won't get worse. 
So as we're, as we're learning new things, get around top producers. Experience more client situations. Number three, read books. If you're not reading books to learn new things so you can do new things, I think it's foolish to operate today on things you learned yesterday. You should be waking up like, let me, my, my brain, like my brain's a magnet. As soon as I wake up, I go straight to a book because I'm dying to see how this book is going to end because I'm learning so much. And guess what I do? I take that information and I apply it to today. Like when I operate today, I'm operating on things I learned this morning that slowly reshaping how I operate. And the fourth thing for agents, MLS research, the hot sheet every day, five, 10 minutes, scan that. Scan that. When you start doing this, you become a local market expert in a matter of weeks. You start saying things off the top of your head that you don't even know how you knew. Square footage prices, listings that are coming up, like things that went under contract, days on the market. You know it all off the top of your head. You didn't even know you knew it. Somebody asked you something and it just came out. It's amazing what happens when you start doing this. And guess what? All of this, right? And, and, it, and it, like, it also goes to articles, reading articles, right? About the local real estate market, etc. When you combine all these, your content becomes incredible. Okay, this is the, this is the content, this is the content creation formula. <laughs> you can't say, you can't, you can't, the words that you say have to be words that move people. If you're just saying, hey, I got this house, it's listed, it's real nice, check it out. <laughs> I'm, at the, I'm at 5734 Riverwood Drove. This is how you create content. And so, and so when I said that my business was predicated, and the reason I got up to a million dollars a year was because I created great content, I wasn't, I wasn't posting it on social media, the, the, these traditional social media platforms, but I was posting it. Does anybody know where I was posting it? Who does a monthly newsletter? Uh, it's a weekly in an email, right? When I, when I open up my phone and I go to, go to my email, okay, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my email, what's the physical motion that I'm, that I'm, that I'm doing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when I open up Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, what's the physical motion I'm, I'm doing there? It's the same thing, right? It's a different format. There's no social community behind it. There's a lot of different social media platforms that do a lot of different, different things. You're still hitting a community. It's a place where you post original, consistent content, right? So think about it. I built my million dollar business on the back of a weekly email. And I got really good at creating content for the weekly email. And that's what got me to the million dollars. And then when I got into the coaching business, I said, oh, I got to figure out social media. It was the same game. I, all I did was take the skills that I learned building my weekly email, which was creating content and use those same skills to build my social medias. It's the same game. If you guys, it's so funny. Remember when ForSaleBanner.com tried to take us out? Yeah, like real estate agents are done. ForSaleBanner.com is here, you guys are toast. You know what it did? It gave me easier access to call the for sale by owners to list them. It just gave, I was able to list for sale by owners way faster. Thank you for sale by owner.com. Mm -hmm. Zillow came along, right? It's gonna take you out. What did Zillow do? It I, I literally do not search for properties anymore. Thank you, Zillow. The buyers tell me what they wanna see and I go set it up and show them. I used to spend hours looking up properties for, for buyers. You guys realize every little thing that the world has tried to, to use to, to replace agents has only made our lives better? AI? AI has only helped us sell more property in less time. It's not gonna replace us. So my point is, is that the NAR settlement, commission changes, markets, elections, AI, whatever the case may be, this is what I want your attitude to be. If it takes out the entire population of agents, all the way down to two agents, I'm gonna be one of them two agents and I'm gonna outsell the other one. Right? Thanks, Mom.
that's what that's the way you need to think it's not going to happen but you need to learn new things so you can do new things and master new things so what you feel invincible and that's why when i, when I get on these live calls if you haven't seen it you, you can go watch these literally create three or four incredible the highest quality leads you will ever find that people would pay thousands of dollars for i get them for a penny and I create these out of thin air. How do I do that? Because I did, I learned new things and did new things and mastered them to the point where I feel invincible. See, when you have the ability to create leads out of thin air, then you don't care what the new rules are. You can just go create more business. But when you're dependent on another platform or a company or a brokerage or a team leader, for your business, you feel vulnerable. Why? Because you are. Don't put yourself in a position where you're dependent on someone else. Like, I love social media. Um, the basis of my business would not be to post on social media hoping leads reach out to me. Yes, I will take those leads when they come and I will close those leads, but I'm not gonna be dependent on that situation. Not everybody's built the same way. Not everybody's built the same way. Okay, here's you. Okay, here's the closing. Okay, from you, we're gonna go, the next thing you have to do on the windy road to a deal is you gotta lead gen, right? You have to get leads, okay? Now, how do we get leads? Well, you got open houses, social media, Zillow, uh, door knocking for cell phone, like you got all the stuff. And by the way, honestly, you could probably only come up with about 10 or 15. After that, you're just, calling the same thing something else, right? There's not that many avenues, but you can't get here without going here. Now, I don't care if it's Zillow, if it's open houses, if it's social media, if it's cold calling, if it's sphere of influence, I don't care what it is, okay? What's the next stop on the road to the deal? What's the next stop? You have to talk to them. Country, he emailed me, I never actually talked to him. We emailed back and forth and he actually did a deal. So one out of a thousand for me. It did happen, but it's rare, right? Right, and so what, what, what does this equal? This is a conversation, a combo. You, you cannot, okay, I'm just telling you, you cannot get from here to here without this and this. Not gonna happen. Do we agree? Okay, and then as we continue on the path, this is servicing, right? Servicing, retention, and nurturing these relationships, okay? So when you lead Jen, you talk to them, maybe they don't wanna do a deal, now we're, we're nurturing, right? Building relationships. Talk to them, they wanna do a deal, we're servicing the deal. They've done a deal, right? Now we're coming back here, we're retaining them as a client, right? So this, this path here, right? We go under contract, we have to service the deal before we actually close the deal and get paid. This is the simple roadmap to every single transaction. So the, the point I'm trying to make here is that where do most struggling agents spend their time, money, and energy on, on, on this path? Right here? Okay. Right here, this is where everybody spends all their time, money, and energy, right? This is where they spend all their time, money, and energy. What if I told you people spend all their time, money, and energy right here, right? Why, why, why do they, okay, you know, okay, this is what I do. Doop. It's called a shortcut, okay? I just go, Right here, I have to have a conversation. That's the only way to get to a deal. So, and, and I can just go ahead and just talk to people right now without doing any of this. Please tell me how, please show me how, please give me this, right? Please give me this. It's funny because agents, this entire business is predicated on you talking to people that you do and don't know to help them buy and sell real estate. And it's the exact thing that no agent wants to do. They don't want to talk to people that they do and don't know to help them buy and sell real estate. Am I right? You guys all said yes. I didn't say yes. You said yes. So what happens is, is, is we do this, 
Why do we do that? When we know we can do this, everybody here knows you can just call property owners. You know that. But you don't want to do this, so you'd rather do this instead, so you don't have to do this, but then guess what? You come right back to it. You can run, but you can't hide. So th this, is, this, is the, this is the basis of what I do, okay? So here I am, right? I'm gonna take a shortcut. I'm not gonna spend thousands on Zillow. I'm not gonna spend time at an open house. I'm not gonna you know, do social media for my primary lead gen activities. What am I gonna use social media for? I'm gonna move it over here. I'm still gonna do social media, but I'm gonna use it as a retention, a nurturing, a servicing tool, whereas a byproduct of me doing that, I will get leads from social media, great. But I wanna control my own destiny. I don't wanna be dependent on the industry, I wanna control my own destiny, okay? So who in here needs a lead? You need a lead? You need, I don't need a lead, who needs a lead? Everybody gets a lead. Okay, I got you. Who here, this is, we're all agents, who here is, is looking for a property for yourself to buy, you can't find? You wanna buy something, you can't find it. You got a mic? Hi, I'm Sirius Lyle, here from Northwest Broward, and the Sons of Director. Give him a hand. Okay, cool. Test, test, test. So tell me, tell me what you're looking for. What kind of property are you looking for? Industrial real estate. What? Industrial real estate. Warehouse. Okay. Who's looking for a residential piece of property? <laughs> are you looking for a residential piece of property by chance? I could actually work with that, but I want to get a residential buyer. Who, who's looking for a residential property? Here we go. Good afternoon, everybody. Hey. So what, what do you, who, who, what's your name and where, where do you work? My name is Julissa Maika from the Kais Company and I am the marketing director for Network West Brown. Great, great, give her a hand. Thank you. And um, what market are you in, young lady? Looking for the lead? What market are you in? Um, West End, West Miramar, and North Miami. Okay, cool. And then what, tell me what kind of property you're looking for. I'm looking for a four bedroom, three bathroom with a pool in Weston, Sunrise, Miramar, or Pembroke Pines. <laughs> oh my God, I just gave everybody here yes. business. Thank you you can literally take that right there and call every four bedroom with a pool in, in Weston, Elementum P, like, Every, all these places you just said, you could literally, you guys could, you, you could literally call all the four bedrooms with pools, people that own it, and say, I got to buy the buy. Um, you can call me at 732-718-0. See, I just gave all of you guys. Do, do you guys realize, do you guys realize that, you, that the sellers, they don't care if it's an agent that's buying their house, as long as the money's green. Like there's so like there's so much business just in this room. Thank you. You can have a seat. Thank you. Can I, can I say one sure. Thing? I am looking for a commercial property at to lease of uh, seven thousand dollars up to uh, eleven thousand. I just found you a tenant. <laughs> like, do you see what happened here? Like, he got a tenant, and she. We need to close within three months. Thank you. Okay, so <laughs> let me back up. So she wants a four bedroom with a pool, very specific, okay? Like, do you guys understand, like, who doesn't see that? Like, I, w w like, if I were in this area and I didn't have any business going on, it would be so easy, because you could take Red X, Mojo, any of them. Like, you get sellers for a penny. And you could call the four bedrooms that have pools and say, hey, I know an agent, I met her at an event today. It was the most hilarious thing. A guy on stage called her out. She wants to buy a four bedroom with a pool. How funny is that? You got a four bedroom with a pool. Somebody, that was weak. <laughs> but what's even cooler is you can find a listing of a five bedroom and you could call the four bedrooms that she wants to buy and say, hey, I see you're in a four bedroom. I got a five bedroom I'd love to show you. Don't even tell them you got a buyer yet. Show up with, with value. 
hey, I see you're in a four bedroom. I got a five bedroom I'd love to show you. If you're thinking about, if you need a bigger house, see how it plays out. Knowing you got the buyer in your back pocket that you can pull out if you need it. Because if you, if you start out with, I got a buyer, they're like, yeah, right, click. Everybody says that. But if you can fill them out with bringing them value, like, hey, do you need a bigger house? Do you need a nicer house? Do you need a, do you need a, you want a, a better quality of life? Because I'm not trying to get you to sell your house. I'm not trying to get you to do anything. I'm just trying to find out, do you want a better quality? Do you, did your mother-in-law move in? Did you guys have a baby? Do you need a bigger house? Because I got one right down the road I'd love to show you and see what they say. And then the conversation opens up because you didn't, you didn't show up saying, hey, Mr. Seller, hey, you don't know me and I don't know you, but will you sell your house so I can make some money? Because that's how we all sound. You showed up and said, hey, I don't know you don't know me, but I don't want anything from you. I just want to see if you want a nicer house, a newer house, a bigger house, in a better location, with a better view, with a pool, without a pool, whatever. And you find out what people are trying to do. And what's funny is, is they'll say, no, nah, I don't want the five bedroom. But they're thinking, since this, this person, this person cares about me, obviously. Let me open up now and tell them what I really want to do. Next thing you know, you're helping them buy something else, not the five bedroom. Right? And now you got something for you. Now you got something for you to buy. It's called situations. This is what I call situations. And this is what we all need to be focused on, is situations. You should be waking up in the morning and you should be thinking to yourself, what situation am I gonna work on today? When you watch me make calls, I'm, I'm literally, <laughs> like, I, one call session, I start out calling for sale by owners, right? They're like, yeah, I'll give a buyer agent four and a half percent. I'm like, don't, don't, don't hand me, don't do this with four and a half percent, expect me not to take it. I literally shut down conference help owners, switched right over to a subdivision that's smaller than that subdivision, started calling those owners. Right there, it's live. This was like two Fridays ago. You can go watch it. Started calling those owners. Like, I didn't know when I started the call session I was going to call that neighborhood about a home that I found. Like, I'm looking for situations that I can then pursue to find more situations. You have to stir the pot. All we're doing is calling people and just trying to list the property. No, ask them 20 questions about why they want to do what they're trying to do so you can understand all the opportunities and put together a plan to help them do it. I called the subdivision. They didn't want to buy that house, but I found somebody that wants to buy a waterfront house. Four and a half percent, I get a buyer for a waterfront home who's going to sell their house. I ran into a builder that has two homes he's trying to sell, and another guy in the neighborhood wants to liquidate all his rental properties by the end of next year. All in a matter of 30, every single call session that I do is like that. And like the people that get Zillow leads and like social media leads and all this stuff, like, okay, but you can't get to this without this. And we all agreed to that point, right? Well, <laughs> the problem, the, the reason why I, my business grows, and guess what happens? I talk to them first. By the time they saw the video, I already talked to them and got, I'm already here. Deal after deal after deal after deal. So what I'm saying is, is the amount of these that you're having, correct me if I'm wrong, the amount of these that you're having will dictate the amount of these that you have. Right? True or false? Okay. So if that's the case, why aren't we just having these all day, every day, so that we can have these all day, every day? That's how I live. I'm a top 1% of 1%ers. One Not everybody operates like this. But if I can get through to a couple of you and get some of you on the path to realize what this is, then you can get there a lot faster because I realized really early on in my career, the agents that were, that were dependent on leads, at the most, they were picking up like 500 leads a, a, a year, like 50 a month, right? Does that sound right? So there may be some things where people are getting more leads than that, whatever. I'm calling 500 a week. I'm literally doing a year's worth of their work because it all comes down to volume of people that you talk to and build relationships with. Period, end of story. So if I'm doing a year worth of their work in a week, whose business is growing faster? And the cool thing is, is that when you build your business like this, 
don't be so singularly focused on that objective because what happens is, is when you call these people, they don't want to buy that house. Then, for you to sell that house would be like lightning striking me twice with a shark biting me at the same time. You're not going to sell it. If you do, I'm telling you, you won the lottery. Like, okay, you're using the situation to find more situations. And these people don't want to do anything for a couple years. Great. What's going on in your life that's causing you to, to want to do something in a couple years? Tell me about that. Do you have an agent that you're going to work with? I'd love to work with you. Build that future business while you're building the now business at the same time. Most of us, what I found, are only focused on now business or future business. Do it both. There's a guy who's crushing it. You know, he's got like you know, 9,000 people in his database. He makes calls. He's doing great. He's like really good at it. But he just focused on numbers. He's like, oh, I want to get my database up to a certain number. I want to be crushing it. I'm like, how many deals have you done this year? One. Dude, there's a huge disconnect, man. You're just focused on the future business. Combine them. And what he's not doing is he's not going deep enough with the conversations. All right. Switching gears before I uh, take some questions. You guys, you guys are in an incredible spot. Because you have, like, do you guys have $20 million homes around here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did you know that you could just pick a listing that's 20, 30, 40 million and just call the owners that have five, 10 million dollar homes and call them and say, hey, I see you've got this. Would you like this one? I'd love to show it to you. Do you know that you could do that? I want to do luxury. Okay, find a luxury property and call the smaller luxury owners and see if they want to upgrade to it. And if they don't, that's fine. Let me be your agent later when you do something. It's so easy. But what we're doing is, is we're spending all our time, money, and energy right here. Right here. And really, I think this should be more what we're using for this. We should be, this should be gone. This should just be out of here. And we should be just going straight here to here to here. That's really what it should be. Do you guys, whenever you get a Zillow lead, a Facebook lead, an Instagram lead, you know, when you, call, when you do make contact and start calling them, you know, you, you have to win them over still. And they may have like, they may have a certain level of likability to you because they saw your videos and stuff, but you still ain't there yet. You still got to win them over. And you still have to develop that skill of communication to a level where you can make people feel comfortable with you and like you enough to win them over to what? Be their number one choice out of 60,000 agents. That skill level to win them over is the thing that you have to learn, do, and master. And when you do that, you get to a point where you're like, I can just call anybody because it's all the same thing. I know how to win people over. I know how to make people feel comfortable with me. I know how to create business out of thin air. Who has a client, not just a personal property, who has a client that's looking for something that you can't find? Look at how many deals are in the room. You have a client that needs something that you can't find? Why aren't you looking for it? Okay. Online or calling property owners who might want to sell to the buyer? Online. Okay. See, here's, here, here's one thing before I start taking some questions. The current model of the commission sharing has created a scenario where well, we're kind of doing half the work. We find the seller, we wait on another agent to find the buyer. We find the buyer, we wait on another agent to find the seller. That's how it works. And it's great because it's super efficient. Because I can go out here and just get listing after listing after listing after listing after listing and just let everybody else sell them. Awesome. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. However, when I'm, when I'm at the bottom and I don't have any deals happening, I'm gonna be trying to connect. I'm not just looking online, waiting on another. I can't wait on anybody. I can't be dependent on any platform and I can't wait on anyone. I have to control my own destiny if I wanna build my business to the moon. All right, I'm going to take some questions. Thank you guys so much. And before we get into some Q&A, I do want to say I'm doing a Set More Listing Appointments Challenge next week. And anybody that's here, it's at 297 is the VIP. 
And I'll give you guys $100 off if you sign up today. Use the code 100 for the VIP. It's a four day challenge. I'll be coaching you directly for four days and I'll be, co I'll be teaching everything on lead gen, conversion, uh, retention and ascension during the four days. It's two hours a day. Just use the code 100 at checkout and that's at setmorelistingappointments.com. I had an agent that did it two months ago. She's made $50,000 since then. I had another agent that's got seven listings sent in, in 45 days. I got a guy getting three listings a week. Like story after story after story after story. Because I cut right down to the purest form of how to build your business. Are you looking to set and close more listing appointments? That's exactly why I created the Set More Listing Appointments Challenge. It's a four day challenge and I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about setting more listing appointments and closing more listing appointments. If you wanna become a listing machine, then you need to take the next challenge. You can go to setmorelistingappointments.com or just click the link in the description. I'll see you on the next challenge. Who has a question? If you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll have uh, someone come up to you with a microphone. Raise your hand if you have any questions for Ricky. You only get Ricky live every so often here in South Florida. So if you have a question, please. How's it going, Ricky? Hey, bro. Uh, so I'm with the Kai's company, Alex Blanco. I'm one of those that are in fear of posting on social media, mainly because I am scared of AI and all the things that they can do with my photos, with my face, with my kids and then take those and manipulate them in negative things that come with that. So how do I get away from that fear and just kind of reassure myself that it's not as scary as it really is? Well, you have to actually ask yourself, what are the chances of that happening, right? Um, the Bible says, don't be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself, which means there's 95% of the things you worry about will never happen. And the 5% that does, you can deal with it when it happens. If they're going to do that to you, they're going to do that to you whether you're on social media or not. They can get your stuff. There's a picture of you somewhere, right? Um, I think you have to weigh the pros and the cons. And look, the cons may not outweigh the pros for you personally. It's okay. Guys, social, I, I don't know if this is, I can say, social media is not mandatory. It's not mandatory. And it's not for everyone. I'm straight up. Now, there are so many different ways. Because remember, social media is not just, is not the only, right? Content is not social media, right? Social media is, has content on it. But there's so many different mediums, right? Maybe you use social media to write blogs on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. Maybe that's how you do. There have been posts that I have written, just words, that have gotten millions of hits with no picture, no video, no nothing. Right? And it comes back to what you're saying. If your content is actually saying things that move people, that's something they never heard before, then you've got, then you, you, can, you can use written word. So maybe think about that. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ricky. So my name is Christina, and on that note, what content or what's something new, something that no one's ever heard before, that you are working on right now? Oh. Share with us. Oh wow. Um, I think of things every day. I think of okay. I think of quotes. I think of um, uh, you know, ideas and tactics and strategies and principles every day. It's how my mind works. Um, so many, I don't even get them all on paper, right? And I have so much client experience. I talk to so many agents. Um, I post so much content. I actually try not to read the comments anymore. It gets a little wild sometimes. <laughs> but the, the comments can be a good place to, uh, to, to get some ideas, right? I, I'll give you guys a tip. When you're reading a book, right? When you're watching a video, when you're listening to a podcast, when you're... Um, however you absorb your, your content, right? I want you to take notes and don't write down what they said. Write down what they said made you think, right? Don't write down what they said. Write down what it made you think of. 
Now you're develop now that you're developing your own content now. You can create content better than the than the than the, than the greatest content creators on the face of the planet. Why? Because you can say things and words and phrases and you have ideas that nobody's ever thought of. For real, for real. Everybody's always thought every all the ideas have, have all been thought of, right? But not in the way that you perceive them yourself and, and articulate them. Right? So not to answer your question, it's more like a politician type answer, but but that's how you create great content. What's up, Ernie? Hey, bud. Uh, Paul Ernie, the top tier. Uh, quick question. So I'm not my agents here, and uh, I have a few for you. I've been uh, actually in Zero Diamond since like 2019, something like that. And you've always been a free coach, and I love that about you. Um, what makes this uh, somewhere this things a uh, situation we spoke about uh, your charging yeah. different from your live streams when you are showing people how you pick up this? The, con the content that I share is different than anything I've ever done. I'm, I created it towards different content where nobody could go in there and say, oh, I already heard all this stuff. Um, but going from free to paid, you know, I did free for seven years, right? Long, like way longer than anybody like in the face. Like I did more for the industry uh, through that than probably anybody in the, in, in the history. Through the seven years of being free, it's like, okay, this might work for you. It worked for me, it might work for you, I don't know, okay? Then you go take it, you know how many agents that I have that make an extra six figure, like three, four, five hundred, a million dollars a year off of what I, what I shared with them? So after a certain point, it, it turns into, okay, this is actually worth something. So, so what happened was, I had to build the confidence in what I was sharing that I knew for a fact that I can take an agent and help them make an extra 100, 200, 300,000 before I felt comfortable charging anything for it. And although I would have agents who would go have those results, I still wasn't at the point myself where I felt 100% confident that I can take any agent and say, if you do what I say, you will succeed at this level. And, I, and it took me a long time to get there. That's why I was free for so long, because I wasn't going to charge until I felt that it was actually worth something. Even though agents were crushing it with it, I still wasn't there myself. Well, I, now I'm there, right? When agents are making you know, 50000 in two months and picking up listings and all this stuff, and, it's, and, and it is different content. It's different. Another tidbit is that when you do VIP, the, you get to come the first hour via Zoom. General admission is just watching on the Facebook the second hour. You don't get to ask questions. On the VIP for the Zoom, the first hour, it's just Q&A the whole time. So I get to get agents and find their specific problems where they're getting stuck in their business and help them get unstuck. It's priceless. It's true, and, and I, I actually learned that whenever I switched to pay, there was some hate mail for a little while. And I was like, wait a minute. Like, you want me to help you make a million dollars, though? Like this is a hundred dollars we're talking about. You're mad? You know, anybody here, would anybody here trade me $10,000 to make a hundred thousand every year for the rest of your life? Okay, 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 okay. You, you can pay me. You, yeah, right. But I'm saying, like that's what coaching is, right? It's an investment in yourself through the coach. It's not, 10,000 is not gonna make me rich at all, right? Who wins bigger, the agent that makes 100,000 every year for the rest of their life and maybe even grows it to two, 300 off of what they learn in the coaching program or the coach that made 10,000 one time? Who won bigger? The agent. The agent. Thank you. That's, that's real coaching. Let's get a real estate question. Hey, so my name is John, I'm a real estate. And most of us, Although I do have like a hard time when, you know, I call and I call and I call and I don't get results, I kind of fall off. And then, you know, it's like, it takes me a roller coaster ride in order for me to, oh, I need to start calling you again or I need to go on out onto the door. So what would be a good tip to avoid that, you know, that roller coaster ride and stay more consistent? Yeah. It's Even when, you know, you're getting rejection, being cursing at you. Give it up for this guy. That's pretty vul That's a pretty vulnerable question. 
Um, so what you have to do, it's, it's, it's kind of simple, right? And I have to say it's simple because, so that you get it. All you have to do is redefine your definition of results. You said that I'm not getting the results, right? But there again, if I actually took a look at what your results actually were in terms of um, relationship creation and database growth and the quality of the conversations and what deals you did squeeze out. Do you guys realize that when, 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 this, when this happens, when the $7 million a year happens, okay, it's the agents who have front loaded into their business, front loaded, right? Does everybody know what that means? You front loaded so many conversations and built so many relationships, right? That may not turn anything right then. You're gonna do a lot of deals by doing that. You, you're not gonna not do deals doing what I'm saying. You're not gonna not do more deals doing what I'm saying. But if you front load as many of these conversations as you can, right, into the front end, you know for a fact what it looks like on the back end as the market rebounds, which it does 110% of the time. And so there's two things. One, you gotta, you gotta redefine re what results means to you. Because if you're may having call sessions and you're actually having great conversations and you're building, you're just not doing, if just the deals are the results and you're not getting deals, you're like, oh, this isn't working, that's the wrong attitude. Uh, and another thing is, I talk, my, my, uh, my conversations are the same as yours. I don't know if you guys watched the call session I did Friday, two Fridays ago, whenever I did it, Friday. Three people hung up on me during that call session. Like they were weird, rude, hung up on me, right? But then I got four incredible leads. Waterfront home buyer that wants to sell. For sale by owner, uh, four and a half percent. Builder selling two homes. Investor gonna liquidate in, in a year and a half. Um, I'm having the same conversations you have, right? I'm just able to turn them into something. And so redefine what, you're, what, what the definition of results are for you, one. And two, think about the long tail, because you're building a career. See, when, when, when I talk to agents, I'm not helping them. I want you to close more deals this year. But my, but my ultimate goal is to help you build a massive career over the next 5, 10, 15 years where you can get to a seven-figure more business. That's my ultimate goal. And so when we, when the, the philosophies that I cover, we're building our now business, but we're building a massive business for the next three, four, five years. You gotta keep, you gotta keep your eyes on that prize, man. Right, because the more you, you let off the gas from front loading on the front end, then the, then the smaller your business is going to be when things really take off. The last deal I closed was from a lady who I first prospected four years ago on, on a door knocking. Yeah. And then she called. I, yeah. I honestly let my foot off the gas, but I didn't contact her for like six or seven months. Mm -hmm. On a random Saturday afternoon, she, she pops up on my phone, so I answer the call, and she's like, John, I'm ready to sell Nice. Nice. Yeah, just keep going, bro. Keep going. Don't stop. Keep your eyes on the prize. Thank you guys so much. Set more listing appointments.com.